Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. We are back after a long hiatus of making videos and there's not a better time to do it when a drone like the DJI Matrice 4T comes out. We're gonna go through all the specs, gonna talk about why this drone is great, how it compares to some other drones. I'm gonna show you some examples, so let's get started. Okay, first you gotta talk about the thermal sensor on this drone. It is high resolution, 640 by 512 resolution. You can up that. There's a super resolution feature on this drone that is gonna make the image clearer than it would be natively. Uh, so you can up that with super resolution and that's gonna make it 1280 by 1024. So you are getting a significantly upgraded thermal sensor on this drone. With the thermal sensor, it's kind of hard, honestly, to tell the difference all the time because it's so good on the M30T, the Matrice 4T, and even the Mavic 3T. Uh, all of those have really great thermal, but the one on the Matrice 4T has been upgraded, uh, so you're gonna see some better resolution in that image. And of course, you've got all the standard features from DJI Enterprise drones in the past. You can change the palettes. Uh, to whatever you want. There are several different options there. It's really whatever meets your eye. Typically for like our police and fire departments who are using it for search and rescue, they are using white, hot, or black hot. That just seems to work best for them. It's also got an isotherm feature where you can draw a little box on the screen. It's pretty cool draw a little box and it's gonna tell you the hottest point and the coldest point within that little square. So you can think of, you know, different things, inspection work, uh, obviously search and rescue, but other areas where knowing that information, knowing where the coldest spot and the hottest spot is in that little area, how that could benefit in many different ways. You've also got a night scene mode in this. Now, basically night scene collects all the available light in the area, ambient light, everything helps light the scene up. There's also a near IR light on this drone that is gonna light up the area when you're in night scene. So that's pretty great. You're gonna be able to see things that you didn't think were possible to see. And I think this is actually an upgrade from the Matrice 30T. I think night scene mode in the Matrice 4T is actually better than the night scene in the M30T. You're also getting a 48 megapixel wide angle lens on this drone. That is very high resolution. Uh, the camera itself is not gonna be up with the wide angle camera on the Matrice 4E. That we're gonna talk about in another video, but the Matrice 4E, very similar to this one, just doesn't have thermal, but it does have a 20 megapixel micro four thirds sensor. So your images are not gonna be as clean on the Matrice 4T as they are on the Matrice 4E. And that's important for things like mapping, of course. Also important to note is that the Matrice 4T has an electronic shutter. That is not ideal for mapping. On the other hand, the Matrice 4T can do thermal mapping as well. Also on the front of this drone is a laser range finder. That's right, a laser range finder. With this function, Basically what you do is you point at an object and with the laser range finder on, you're gonna be able to tell the distance it is from the drone, you're gonna be able to see the lat longitude and some other things that are gonna give you more operational information. We tested this out and it was working at well over a mile. So really, really impressive that you can point at something that's a mile away and get its coordinates. You're also getting 112 times hybrid zoom with these cameras. So there is a medium telephoto and there is a regular telephoto camera on this. So two cameras, they're using them together to get that kind of a zoom range. So the medium tele goes to a certain point, then it'll switch over to the regular telephoto lens and we'll go the rest of the way. Now the Mavic 3T was only a 56 times zoom and that was a hybrid zoom as well. That's pretty impressive. And it's impressive on this one as well. Now, the further in you push, obviously this is all digital, so the further you push, the muddier things are gonna get. But a very impressive zoom at 112 times. There's also a nice feature, it's called side-by-side, -side, where you can have the thermal camera on one side and then you could have like your zoom on the other side. You're sort of able to get both views at the same time. And a lot of the operators that we deal with really like this function, just gives them more information. And the more information you have, the safer your flight is gonna be and the more efficient you're gonna be. All right, let's get into some of the meat and potatoes on this one. It has a 49 minute flight time per battery, 
So I would say you're looking at like 38 minutes just in the time we've been flying it over the past week. Uh, that's what we've seen. You're getting closer to 38 to 40 minutes, probably not quite the 49 minutes, which is listed. And they only list it like that because that's an absolutely ideal controlled uh, condition. Comparatively, that is good when you look at like the M30T or the Mavic 3T. Matrice 4T does have a, a really solid flight time. Operating temperatures are 14 degrees all the way up to 104 degrees. So if you're talking about the polar vortex, you're probably not gonna wanna fly this one. Whereas with the M30T, it's gonna be able to take harsher conditions, it's gonna be able to take rain and snow. Important to note that this drone, the Matrice 4T, does not have a weather rating. So you need to know that the max wind speed listed is 27 miles an hour. Now, I know lots of people push it. You really should try to stick to that. But if you're up at 32 miles per hour, the odds are you're gonna be okay. These drones can take a lot in terms of wind, uh, but you don't wanna push it too far. Got a horizontal speed of up to 42 miles an hour. You're gonna get that when you're in sport mode. I wouldn't put it in sport mode unless you absolutely have to. Sport mode turns off all of your sensors and that makes it dangerous to fly. So you don't wanna go up to 42. I think we got it up to 33 miles an hour the other day, just in normal mode. And I think that's generally fast enough for most people. These aren't racing drones. Speaking of the sensors, you've actually got them all over this drone. It's kind of crazy. They are fisheye lenses. They are protecting you from every single possible angle. They are telling you if you're gonna get too close to something. They are telling you if you're gonna run into something. Say you're on an automated mission and your drone is headed for a tree, the sensors will see the tree and it will stop. So the sensors are huge and there's actually in the DJI Pilot app, which is what you use uh, to operate the drone on the remote, there's a nice little feature, it's called Vision Assist. You'll see it in the bottom right corner. You can actually look out of several of those sensors to be able to see how close you are to something. You can look down, straight down, which is a good feature as well. Uh, so you can look up, down, left, right, and you'll be able to see what is surrounding you in all angles. The deployment time on this drone is really, really quick. You're gonna get it out of the box and up in the air, ready to fly in under a minute. We've tried it out several times. It never takes you more than a minute and typically a little bit less, probably 45 seconds, but it is very, very quickly deployable. And you've got a transmission range. This is our listed transmission range of 15 miles. Now that again is in perfect conditions, no obstacles in the way, nothing blocking its signal. And let's not forget that's also way farther than 99% of you are allowed to fly. You gotta keep the drone within your line of sight so 15 miles away is way too far for that, so you, you won't have the need uh, to ever go that far. And don't test the range on this, because you're gonna end up being way out of your line of sight, and some of you will post it on YouTube, and then you'll get in trouble with the FAA. So don't do that. This drone already has an RTK antenna built into it. So if you're familiar with the Mavic 3T or the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, you would have to buy an additional little top hat that you would put on top of the drone that would give it RTK connectivity. Now, if you don't know what RTK is, RTK stands for real-time kinematics. Essentially what that means, you're getting GPS on steroids. You have to connect your drone to an RTK network, whether that is a base station or it is a broadcast RTK network, uh, you're able to then connect. You're just gonna get more stable flights, more accuracy. But important to note here, DJI just came out with their DRTK3 base station. Thing looks really impressive, but you use that to basically connect the drone. There are multiple ways to mount it. Really, really good product. But what we discovered is we have the DRTK2. So if you already have the DRTK2, you can hook this drone up to the DRTK2 as well. So the two or the three, you're not gonna have any problems, but having that antenna built into the drone already is a really nice touch, a really great feature. And if you're using RTK, it's invaluable. This is a cool one. If you hit the AI button on the remote, here I'm pointing at a parking lot and you can actually see how the drone has identified all of the vehicles in that parking lot. Okay, you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen, it's giving you an actual number of cars that it sees. And when it sees a person, it can identify a person as well and will give you a count of that. Pretty cool feature. There are some algorithms that people are coming up with as well. So for like wildlife conservation, somebody came up with one that would recognize elephants. So it would count 
how many elephants are out there in a field. And there are other algorithms that are being created for different objects or different subjects and can be really useful depending on what you're using your drone for. So if you're on a farm and you're trying to count your cattle, this could really be a game changer for you. The Matrice 4T also has a smart track feature. Now we saw this in the Matrice 30T. It's also in the H30T that you use with the Matrice 350. It was not in the Mavic 3T. So this is an upgrade here for the Matrice 4T uh, where it'll do this smart tracking. So you're looking at a road, the remote is gonna recognize that there are cars coming down that road. You click on that car or a person for that matter, and the drone is gonna lock on to that object and it will just continually track it until it's out of sight. So it could go behind a tree, it could go behind you know a building, whatever. Uh, it's gonna lose track of it then, but this will track for miles. And it's only using the zoom lens on the camera. It's not actually following the object. So it's not flying alongside it. It's, this is not like a follow me type function. It will stay in place and just use the zoom range to continue to follow that object until it's out of sight. So this is a really great feature and I'm really glad they brought this down uh, from the M30T to the Matrice 4T because that is a big value and glad they included it in this drone. It also has some other cool smart features like a fly to mode. So you can drop a pin somewhere and literally the drone will fly directly to that pin at an altitude that you set. It'll also do terrain follow, which is great because say you're doing a mapping mission or say you've set up a grid uh, or say you're just flying in general and you wanna stay at a certain altitude this is gonna help with that. So if you're flying and there's a big hill, it's gonna still stay the same height. So if your height is at 100 feet, it sees the hill and it's gonna be 100 feet above that hill. So that's a good feature and a good safety feature as well to make sure you're not running into stuff that you're not supposed to run into. And of course there's cruise control on this drone. So you start flying the drone in a direction, hit cruise control and the drone is just gonna to continue to go in that direction at that exact speed, very, very much like a car, which is why they called it cruise mode. Another feature is point of interest. So you can use that laser range finder, you can drop a pin and you can set it up so the drone will just continually circle that object. Uh, you can control the camera independently, uh, but the drone will continue to look at that object and just do a big circle around it. And you can change the parameters. So if you want it to fly 20 feet away from your pinpoint, it'll do that and then go in a circle, or you could set it at like 100 feet and do it that way as well. You've got mapping functionality in this drone where you're able to take the pictures that you need and then build them in DJI Terra or another mapping program. So you're able to capture all those images that you need to, but the Matrice 4T is really, really fast. It's gonna cut your time in half. At least it takes the pictures really quick and it does something called multi-directional photos. So it'll take a bunch of photos all at once each time it stops to take those photos. So instead of having to fly four maps or five maps like you would have to fly with the DJI Mavic 3T or any of the other drones, really, this one takes those pictures much, much faster. You're getting a bunch of angles all at once and then you don't need to fly as much. You've got accessories that you can put on top of these drones. You've got a speaker, you've got a spotlight. We have not had the chance to use either one of these yet. We will hopefully be getting our demo units very soon. So these are made directly by DJI, not via third party. So they're gonna integrate well, obviously, into the software. There is also a bottom port on the Matrice 4T. Now, I'm not necessarily sure what this is gonna be used for, but you can see in this promotional video that you can open that up and they plug something into it. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out in the near future, but nice that they've got something expandable there and hopefully to future-proof it to a certain degree. And right here is a big upgrade from like the Mavic 3T. You get the big RC Plus 2 remote, huge screen, very, very bright. Uh, and it just feels good. It feels good in the hand. You can get a lanyard with it. You can put it on a tripod if you want. It's got HDMI out, so you can hook it up to a big TV and see exactly what the drone pilot is seeing. So a lot of cool features on this. And uh, obviously DJI Pilot 2, if you've flown a Mavic 3T or an M30T or whatever, uh, if you've flown with Pilot 2, it's gonna be exactly what you would expect. You're gonna see all the same features uh, plus some on Pilot 2. So the RC Plus 2 
and DJI Pilot 2 are two things that work hand in hand and DJI has got these nailed down. They have got it figured out to make it easy, easy, easy to use. Another big upgrade, especially for people that need to look up. The camera can almost look straight up now, not quite, but almost. So say you're doing a bridge inspection and you need uh, to be able to look up, fly under the bridge and look up at the infrastructure and just see if everything's okay. You can do that now with this camera. It, it's really great that they're giving you that flexibility to, to look further up than you were able to do on past drones. All right, so Matrice 4T overall, an incredible drone. Great thermal, great zoom, lots of smart features, all the sensors you could ask for, and the laser rangefinder as well. You got all sorts of stuff on this drone. We are DJI dealers. We've sold these drones to hundreds of police departments around the Midwest. So we've got lots of experience. We know the drones inside and out. And I know the thing you wanna know is what is the price on this drone? but I can't give that to you. You gotta reach out to us. I'll give you accurate pricing. Today is May 2nd, 2025. The prices today may not be the prices in six months or a year. With all the tariff stuff going on, I'm not gonna speculate, but the price today might not be the price that it is when you actually see this video. So make sure you reach out to us. Contact info is on the screen and in the description below. Make sure you hit like and subscribe on this channel. We're gonna do a whole bunch more videos on the Matrice 4E and the Matrice 4T just to give you an idea on what these drones can do so you can make the best decision for your drone needs. All right, we appreciate you stopping by. We hope you'll do it again. We'll see you next time.